Hi guys, welcome back to the Artificer channel. I know it's been a while, but I've been very busy in the last couple of months. I had a couple of things that came up medically and actually had some recent surgery. But I'm back now and I've got something very exciting to show you today. This is my second attempt, as it were, at figure painting. The Viet Cong figure from the Orient set that I reviewed a while back. And I really wanted to test my techniques. I'm using Balejo paints and I hope you enjoy. So to begin with, you just use a nice layer of black primer. Then after using the primer, I moved on to the sea gray, just to highlight the areas that I wanted to paint on the figure. And just really bring out the detail as much as possible. You can see the facial details really coming out there. So the first step was to use the flat white. And this was just a base coat for the actual face to highlight. So that when you do add the darker features, it all kind of comes out. Moving on, it was time to start painting the uniform of the figure. And I used a nice AK light grey. Just made sure to thoroughly cover the figure as much as possible. Because of course you can always go back and repaint the areas that you're not sure of. Next thing I wanted to do was paint this kind of like a sleeping blanket. I used a nice sand ivory for this. And of course using the same colour for the hat. And don't forget to do the rim, it's the most important thing as well. Next I used an ammo yellow green for the webbing around the figure. And the nice thing about the green is it really gives a stark contrast to the uniform that he's wearing, the grey against the green. I then decided to use some US dark green for the water bottle. And then moved on to Russian tan for the rifle. This is an SKS and it had a very light colour to the wood so I wanted to try and imitate that. Next it was simply just onto painting the satchel. This was pale brown that I used. And as I painted I could see that with a little bit of diluting of the paint, the detail and the shadowing came through quite nicely. I think in hindsight I would make sure to dilute all of the paints that I used. And just added a little bit more detail for the straps of the bag to make it look more realistic. Then using that Russian tan just on top of the hat to give it a bit more depth of colour and also a differentiation between that and the blanket around his neck. And 
And then it was on to using light flesh, so it just covered the whole face and all the features. Unfortunately, as you can see here, the light isn't great, a little bit too intense, but you get the idea. It's important to note that when doing the sandals and feet, you don't have to do too much detail because they will be covered in mud. And then I decided to move on to the actual sandals and start painting the areas where I thought the straps would go and I used some archive footage as well to try and give me some references. I think I managed to get it close enough, as you can see here. Again, if you make a mistake, you can always cover this foot in mud or whatever diorama you put him into. So I wasn't too fast. Unfortunately, as you can see there, there's been a bit of chipping. That's my fault because I didn't wash this thing beforehand. Now back to the SKS, I simply wanted to add a little bit of variation to the color of the wood. This was pale brown that I used. And then moved on to the Balejo Silver, which is really nice, especially from their metal colour finishes. Then I moved back to the Russian Tan, tried to do some streaking effects. Again, as you can see here with an SKS, it's a very light colour to the wood, so I wanted to try and imitate that. painted the bayonet. The only downside is the fact that the actual figure is a bit warped. If you look at the rifle, it doesn't look straight. But nonetheless, I moved on to using Vallejo Metal Color Black, which is like a metallic black color, which really does bring out like a gunmetal shine, which is quite nice. and then I did a few buttons on the webbing and the ammunition packs. So going back to the flesh color, started to use the Vallejo flat flesh. Again, this is slightly darker than the last one. Brushing over lightly on top of the figure, around his face, around the edges of the hand, just to try and get some sort of light variations and changes in the pigmentation. Overall, things were taking shape. I was quite happy with the flesh colour. Now it was time to move on to the next stage. Went back over the blanket again. Try and give it a bit more colour variation, different from the hat. So this is back to the sand ivory. As you can see, it's looking quite nice. This is where I decided to go back, like I said earlier, and just fill in all the areas where there was chipping, areas where the paint bled onto parts I didn't want it to, as you can see with the straps and around the webbing, the trousers. And his backside as well. This is why I love uh, Vallejo and the way that you can just go back over with these colors. no more chipping. So again, this is just a process that, you know, you can do. I decided that I wanted to really work on this guy and make him look as realistic as possible, so I went back over all the areas that I thought needed a bit of a touch-up, and he was really starting to take shape at this point. Now this is fun, this is the flesh wash, and really brings out the facial features almost immediately, you could see there. It's so the same with the feet, automatically it just takes that pigmentation and it really starts to give it its own life.
And I was very impressed with the way that it kind of turned out. So the first time I used Vallejo Flesh Wash, it doesn't look too bad. So after I was happy with the way things looked, I covered the whole figure in matte varnish. This is the fun part. This is using the black wash from Vallejo, but unfortunately I still had a lot of chipping around that hat because it was a very awkward area to paint. And I wasn't too fast. I went back to that later on, as you'll see. Just covering the whole figure in black wash, making sure he's completely saturated to get all of the areas. And then just doing a bit of a touch up on that hat. It really caused me a lot of problems. <laughs> He looks like a mess, but I think it's time to clean him up. So grabbing some acrylic thinners, it's just a case of going back over the parts that you've weathered with the wash, trying to get rid of as much of the wash as possible while trying to maintain elements of shadow. To be honest, it, it looks okay. But as you can see, it really started to work away, especially on the face. That detail was starting to come through nicely. Again, having to fix this pesky hat, but after that, I moved on to the ammo brown panel wash, which I decided to use to try and give it a bit more of a dirty look. I moved on to rust streaking effects by ammo again to try and mimic that mud that you would get in the area the northern part of South Vietnam and in the end I was quite happy as you can see there the feet are covered in mud so it kind of covers up all of the issues from before And there you have it. That is the end result. That was the first time, or the second time really, that I painted a figure using acrylic paints. And as you can see, it turned out pretty good. And this was the first guy that I worked on. And uh, if you want to see more figure painting videos, please do let me know in the comments below. But until the next video, guys, see you soon.